have a discussion session um, now. We're running a little late, so I think we'll run into the coffee break. So feel free to get up and sit, get yourself a coffee or something um, while we, we're discussing things. Um, so does anyone have a question or a topic to discuss to start off? Derek? I guess I'm just thinking, what a, what a marvel of parallel evolution we're seeing. You know, we've seen a, you know, a lot of alternative solutions to the same problem. And I'm just sitting here wondering, how do we collectively learn from this and move forward? Is, is, there, is it possible for us to uh, glean from this, you know, what is the, you know, the best approaches to be using? I'm sure we're learning a lot uh, as we move through this, but the diversity of uh, possibilities seems uh, remarkable to me yet. Yeah, so any comments on that, which I didn't listen to, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, down the back. Yeah, thanks, Rick. I, I agree. There's a really nice diversity of approaches here. Um, we've heard a lot of great things this whole week about how to enter data, whether you use ASCII files or not, or there's um, approaches that are coming in the future, and, and I think it's good to be aware of those. A couple of things I've been thinking about is I'm really interested in the MDL approach. Um, that seems pretty interesting. I'm not even sure what it is, but... Um, the times that I've used Castle, one thing that I really liked was having an input file that was a little bit more dynamic where you didn't have to enter things in in a specific ordered way, but you just defined concepts and it sort of built the model as, as it needed. That comes with some dangers, of course, of you don't know what the ghosts are in the system, as Bjarke said. I think that was a good concept. But, but I think we've identified a lot of um, great tools here to use um, and I'm wondering if now's the time to discuss whether or not GUI type interfaces are useful um, for us to be considering. And if people have had experience developing GUI type interfaces, or if as this community has shown, we're, we're pretty good at using um, either scripts or input files, or um, maybe in the future, the, the other methods that are out there. Yeah, good, good topic to discuss. Um, might be interesting to link that in with um, shiny apps for R. I don't know <coughs> how that works, but it makes R uh, have a, a user interface that's similar to other things. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, at least my experience with using the, the shiny apps and the, the GUI interfaces, um, it depends on your, your target audience. I think for us, it's not that applicable. So my, my software started for a very limited user and it, it, it takes something that, you know, stock synthesis, which is really complicated and lets someone interact with it and get the important information that they need. But as soon as you bring in an assessment scientist who needs all those things that they've built into the model, it very rapidly spirals out of control until you have this huge clunking text box, you know, box input interface that just replicates the original data file and it, it doesn't um, necessarily get there. Maybe in the, the future of uh, intelligent interfaces that are um, trying to guide us, it might be possible, but at least from the things that maybe we can code, it it's, can just end up being a big cluttered mess. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah. Um, so, so I'm from a completely different uh, field, not fisheries modeling, as you'll hear later, but um, we, we have some uh, experience with um, this particular discussion. Um, so the first thing is I think you, you, if you need a GUI and some kinds of users definitely need it, uh, it, can't, it can't come at the expense of, um, expense of the um, command line interface or the text inputs because those are the things that allow you to automate everything script with scripting. Um, but uh, just another comment, it is po if you're talking about GUIs for uh, configuring a model, for instance, a scientific model, there are systems available which can automatically generate uh, 
a GUI from uh, text, um, uh, a text configuration file and associated metadata. So that does, if you can use one of those, it gets around your, um, uh, the problem of maintaining this huge graphical interface uh, in, uh, in, in as, as synchronously as the back end stuff evolves. Um, so it could be worth looking into that. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Um, Patrick? I might need both. Um, well, just to put a plug in for GUIs or some sort of uh, simu simple way to interact with tools. I mean, we're in a situation where most budgets are pretty flat, but uh, demands continue to increase. So if we're gonna try to meet those demands, I think we gotta draw from a more diverse um, analyst pool. And we could have, you know, potentially technician sort of approaches to update assessments. I think if, if we do something like that, then we need sort of simple tools. And I don't, you know, not all the assessments have to be a reinvestigation of the stock. So I think that's possible, but I don't think all those folks are gonna be power users either. Thanks, Patrick, yeah. Um, related to that, I, I like the um, idea that, that Anders has where you basically create a default um, control file or a specification file that's based on good practices and then you allow the um, person to modify it from there. So it kind of avoids people making really bad mistakes. Uh, Anesta? Uh, this is... A this, this thing's about GUIs and interfaces, and I, I put the same with the, with the issue of the ASCII files and the assess and the cloud computing and all of that. That's exactly where, in my opinion, we need the multidisciplinary group and not us looking at ourselves and say, this is great, we can edit these things. Uh, like, like Patrick was putting, there's other people that are not really sitting here that will be using a system like that, and you need to hear them. Um, to design a GUI, a GUI, which seems, and, and shiny apps are great, they give you everything, but in fact there's people that make degrees, PhDs, and entire careers designing these things. And those are the people that should be brought in to do it, and not having us. I mean, I, I really appreciate uh, uh, Anders website, but it really, uh, in terms of uh, utility or useful, or um, how do you put it? Um, <laughs> I think we should actually, the things that we need to do to get this next generation should be using a multidisciplinary team. And people that know what to do, they should do what they know what to do. And not trying to have fishery scientists or, or modelers or statisticians, again, doing GUIs and... Yeah, um, good comment. Um, just looking at this, I mean, it, this seems to be components of, of the general model where us as, well, myself and a few others here, um, are stock assessment scientists that do certain things. Like, it seems as though the output stuff is something where the stock assessment scientists can have a real input because generally they're the ones that are looking at lots of different things and using it. Of course, there's other outputs that go to managers and the public and stuff like that, and that requires a different type of input. But at least for diagnosing your model and looking at the results and maybe presenting them to reviews and things, um, that's where we can have the most input. And it's because it's most of these are in R and people are doing it, and that's why something like uh, R for SS has been so successful, because we're interested in it, it's in a language we use, and there's a good collaboration between the people here. Yeah. But when you get on the other side with the data and, and the, um, setting up models and things like that, that's going to be more difficult for us because we don't like playing with data because it's tedious, as we heard earlier. And um, we also like to set up our models in a certain way with a lot more um, flexibility to do what we want as opposed to using GUIs. And that. so, 
Yeah, so we definitely need to pull in other people to make sure that what we produce is going to be useful for people and, and, and not have an impediment for their use. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think um, I, I, I completely agree there's a lot of value to having you know, computer scientists come in and, and improve these things and, and polish the, the edges and speed things up. But um, I think it can be dangerous to sort of go to this multidisciplinary approach and say, well, we're going to have computer scientists do a lot of this stuff. I think there's a lot of value for fishery scientists in building these things ourselves and being, you know, like if you're going to build the interface for people to use a simplified interface, it makes you really think about what's important in the outputs of the models. And if you're going to build the, the code for the stock assessment model, it makes you really think about how all the different parts of the fishery and the population and the, the, the model design feed together. Like it's just, I think if you don't give people these skills, and we talked in the um, first day about putting, bringing more computer science classes into the stock assessment training rather than necessarily farming that out to a programmer, I think that there's just a lot of value in that. It gives you a more holistic view of what's going on and makes you think about the process from a lot of different angles. And I think that's very valuable. Okay, yeah. And this one just, yeah, also maybe that's to do with the text files. Um, like it's in the future, we're gonna go to, um, the, you know, cloud computing and stuff for a big industry and for maybe, you know, NOAA or ICs, but we've got a lot of people, you know, Rick said he doesn't know half the people who are using SS. Um, getting it in the hands of students and getting it in the hands of um, uh, people with, with, without those interfaces, getting it to, you know, developing countries that are trying to, to implement these processes. Being able to use it on a little computer and text files and having that, you know, sort of scalability, things that people understand is, I think, got a huge value. If we just go to the cloud and you better know what you're doing first before you get there or have a big budget. It's, um, it can lock people out. That's the same thing with the, the data, like poor to data rich. You know, if you have one interface, you bring people in at the ground and they don't feel too scared to move to SS from a simple uh, data pool method. It's just trying to, trying to funnel people up the, up the ladder rather than having, I don't know, they need a trampoline to jump up to the first rung. So I think that we can actually accomplish several of the different things and issues that a few people have just mentioned, both Nathan and the gentleman in the green shirt, whose name I don't know. Um, but if you think about standard process for developing a GUI, I don't think there's a question of whether or not a GUI should be developed. It's a matter of making sure things are developed in a modular way, such that if you're creating functions that you use for your output, that you've separated them in a way that then later we can call those functions through a system like an API or else that it's calling it and the GUI is calling that directly. And so scientists can make contributions directly to the functions. Maybe you have someone else that is developing a web interface that calls R and calls those or uses Python, what have you. But that's just making sure that you have functions, you have a command line interface, you might have a configuration file that can turn that into a page. Um, I think the problem becomes that with some of the tools to make it easy for scientists to develop GUIs, that it combines that and we wind up writing our functions within our GUIs. And so it's not as clear as to what is being called where. And Shiny is fantastic for making things quickly and easily, but it, it tends to combine that and separating it out, making it modular, and then being able to call other people's packages. Um, would solve that issue without needing to decide whether or not a GUI is created. Okay, yeah, John. Yeah, thanks. Um, really enjoyed this morning's uh, presentations. I'm just thinking about the, on the output side, I think this is maybe what, along the lines that you were thinking, Mark, whether, I mean, given that we, we have still a, a wide variety of stock assessment modeling platforms that we're using, uh, maybe we'll converge closer towards something more general, but maybe we won't. But I, I was just thinking, would it be possible or desirable to agree on a kind of standard for outputs such that if the standard were adhered to, then um, we'd be able to use these widely used um, things like R for, um, uh, for SS, uh, whatever sort of modeling platform was being used. So just to have a well-documented sort of um, standard for um, output formats and, and uh, you know, how they're organized that, that if subscribed to would be able to be used in these different packages. Yeah, 
So does anyone with experience in creating these have any comments on that particular idea? I mean, we've seen a couple of those types of frameworks talked about here. Yeah, Momoko. So I, uh, I, so um, it's very important to uh, standardize the output of the uh, stock assessment. So actually, uh, I think that tidy, tidy format or tidy data uh, format would be re really useful uh, to standardize the output file of stock assessment, any stock assessment model, I think. Okay, thanks. Yeah, Nesto. Just to add to that, that conversation, when I'm, when I'm saying that we should be worried about cloud computing, it's not that we should be doing everything in Amazon services. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the system needs to be prepared to do it. It doesn't mean that you don't use it. And uh, the example is that we need to have the design, you need to have things modularized, designed, whatever, so that you can use them in your computer or in, a, or in a server somewhere or in Amazon services when you need that. And the point is that, in my opinion, since I feel ignorant about a lot of the things we are talking about, I think, well, the person or the group that actually knows about that should be doing it. And, and we didn't talk a lot about communication, but if you look about the presentations that we had this week, that's clearly some of those scenes on communication that people commit. And, you know, if you are driving, if you are writing outputs, for example, and developing outputs, there's a, there's a full science about how you, you, you do a, a plot. So why don't we call those guys to actually help us and say, well, look, this is how you, derive, how you write a plot. If you want someone to, 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 to have to pick a certain message, or if you want to be careful that uh, uh, color blinds actually understand what you're putting on, on, on the screen. So that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. Not that um, we should all running uh, uh, the next uh, uh, um, software should be run on, on only on cloud computing. There, are, there is, outside this room, there's a, a huge amount of people, professionals with careers as ours, doing some of the things we are talking about. So let's let them do that stuff. Not yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, I think this may feed into the later part of the day. Um, I think we've heard a lot from uh, European counterparts that you do have a great system for this sort of big collaborative. We've got computer scientists and dedicated fishery scientists and um, database managers and all this working together um, with, a, a fair, with, a, with a long running uh, consistent uh, funding stream. Um, I think, at least from my experience in the US, I seem to have a very much more fragmented, um, most of the people we've heard on working here, uh, Wham up in Woods Hole, my stuff, uh, we're talking about postdocs who get, you know, a specific grant to come in and work on something for a year, two years maybe. Um, and that's really all we get that runway. So how do you, you get to that collaborative? There's obviously no money in my budget to pay for a, a, you know, an hour of software developer time, let alone someone to really like do the work of it. Um, how do we get there? Okay, um, Arnie's got a question. Uh, yeah, is the sound on? I'm going to give you a quarter of an hour. Okay, so. Okay, so um, TAF works closely with stockassessment.org. Assessments that are on stockassessment.org are already open and reproducible. Uh, what TAF adds is how the data were prepared. The data files that Anders mentioned, maturity, survey, indices, were, where did those numbers come from? That data preparation is done in TAF scripts and then the assessment runs on stockassessment.org. So he's basically talking about how the data is prepared. Um, I, I think it's a bit like, I guess, the gadget um, type approach we saw before. Um, so that's one important thing that we don't actually think about that much. Um, perhaps within inside each organization, they, they try and do that. But generally, it's fragmented in the scripts that lie around, and you run one script at a time, and then you'll do something in Excel, and then you know, someone else will do something in something else, and it's kind of messy. So um, unless you have a big organization like um, ICs or, or anything like that, 
it might be difficult to do that because you don't have the funding to pay for people that will do all that nice coding and things to make the databases um, clean and be able to take scripts and put that into um, like a, a, a nice uh, format. Um, we tried to do that at the Turner Commission a while ago. We had a, a professional um, database guy um, that was doing that and there's this concept where there's warehousing. So basically you have a warehouse of all the data and then you produce extracts from that that creates another database and that database is what you use. And so because it's all been put into the right format in possibly as raw form as possible, but in a consistent way, then it's much easier for the, the scientists to use and it's not being updated all the time and contaminated. So um, there's a lot of um, work out there that deals with all this. It's just trying to tap into it and, and getting the funding to actually do it. Uh, any comments? Um, yeah, Brian. Uh, is most of this discussion is seems like it's stopping at the review process, kind of. But is it worth thinking about um, output plots in a standardized way that can be used for the, the step beyond that? Of uh, a lot of these plots could be useful just for assessment scientists to diagnose things and reviewers to review things, but there could be a general cleaner, more like fancy looking plots or simplified versions for like public or this next step beyond the review process for displaying assessment output would be like a different interface perhaps or different output plots. Yeah, so there, there are groups working on that. The one that I know of um, is Kobe. And so there's a, they have Kobe plots and Kobe tables and Kobe this and Kobe that. Um, I personally am not that happy with it because it means they force me into doing something their way and I don't necessarily like it. So, um, but it, yeah, I think a lot more work needs to be done on that, particularly to uh, provide information to managers and to the public. Okay, so I, I think we probably should try and break now so that everyone can get a chance to grab some coffee on that and back in a quarter of an hour. <laughs>